And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Ask Amy is the advice column. The letter goes like this. Dear Amy. Syndicated advice column. I have uncovered a fairly intense, long-term emotional affair my husband of 18 years has been having with a co-worker. I discovered work emails, cell phone calls, text messages, and other personal communications such as notes. My husband and I have discussed this. But he assures me that he has discontinued the relationship. I have my doubts. His company has a no fraternization policy. Following corporate protocol, I wrote to the woman on company email. By the way, if you're following company protocol and you're not an employee, why are you doing sending company email? Would you use your husband's email address and pretend to be him? I ask that she cease and desist any further personal or electronic contact with my husband. That was four months ago, and yesterday I discovered a Facebook friend request she sent to my husband's email. By the way, what's the husband doing with a Facebook profile? That's what he's doing with a Facebook profile. Stop telling me it's so you can put pictures of your grandchildren up there so everybody in the family can see, okay? Stop it. Facebook is primarily for hooking up. Facebook is so you can get some face. The letter to Amy goes on here. It says, there have been many breaches of my request. By the way, breaches is misspelled. I am ready to send a second and last request. <laughs> this is my last request. To discontinue all contact with my husband except for business related matters. If this behavior continues, should I contact the woman's and or my husband's supervisor? Is it unreasonable for me to ask my husband for his work email password? <laughs> Can I ask their supervisor to review and monitor their email? I have asked my husband to arrange counseling, but he always has an excuse as to why he hasn't been able to make the arrangements. It's because uh, somebody's nipples are in his mouth. He can't make a phone call. Oh, hurry on, make a call. Should I get a check? I'll be calling the counselor. <laughs> I am desperately trying to save this marriage, but I feel terrible anxiety every day when he leaves for work. Is it appropriate to seek enforcement of a company's no fraternization policy? Oh, lady, come on. Sign another devastated wife. Let me just say this. Uh, you know, and uh, Amy has her advice, but she's not here. Let me just say this. Forget about whether you should be interfering in company affairs running the risk that your husband will lose his job over this trying to get uh, the company to fire this woman whatever it is you're trying to do uh, you are above all of this not only wasting your time you are humiliating yourself 
I have a simple rule. If I find out, well, of course, I'm, you know, <laughs> been living alone now for a couple of years, so it's kind of irrelevant at this point in time. But when I've been in a relationship or when I've been married, if I find out you've been getting done by somebody else, I do not humiliate myself. I do not ask you to go to counseling with me. I do not call your office and see what your boss can do to help me. I do not try to go through your email or your phone calls. or Why humiliate myself? I get rid of you. That's what I do. I get out. I do what's best for me, and that's to get rid of you. I can't make this any simpler. I don't understand why people feel that it's a good idea to read people's email, look at their text messages, grab their cell phones and go through them, go through their wallets. I mean, it, it, this is some behavior that I just don't get. And I know we're talking to lots of people out there who've done this stuff. You know, I've talked to the guys out there who want to find out if their girlfriend is cheating on them. And I told them what software not to install on their computer. But once you know, once you know for sure something's going on, just start packing. Pack your stuff or pack their stuff, but just start packing. No discussion. Don't lower yourself to their level. Shock the hell out of them and get the hell out of there. Or get them out of there. I don't know. Are you this kind of person? Are you the one who, like... You already know something's going on, but you got to go through the other person's email. I, I know somebody like this, and she knows who she is. She's one of these people who, when she falls in love with somebody, she's like, oh, yeah, you're great. Uh, you know, uh, I don't need anybody else. And yeah, there's a lot of people from the past. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you my email password. I'm going to give you my voicemail password. That way you'll know I'm not talking to any of those people. At the same time, I want your passwords. So that way we have mutually assured destruction. I can check on you. You can check on me anytime. So after she gives her password uh, to her uh, email account, and after she gives the, the PIN number for her voicemail, she then gets other email addresses or other phone numbers, other voicemails, uh, the, the services, other ways of getting messages. So the guy she's with will always think that he's got her passwords and he's always checking her stuff. Now, the reality is guys are calling another number or they're writing to some other email address. They're not even writing to the addresses for which he has the passwords. Meanwhile, she's conned him into giving up his passwords and she's checking up on him. Why do people like this kind of drama in a relationship? I don't want anybody's password. I don't want to know what anybody's doing. If I find out you're doing something, it's over that day, done. It's guaranteed. Other than that, I don't want to know. And you want to know some of the reasons I don't want to know? Because I know you're going to lie to me when certain things happen anyway. When your high school sweetheart comes to town and you want to have lunch with him, you're going to lie to me. You're going to tell me you, um, you had to work through lunch or you're at a meeting when some guy you used to date sends you an email and says, how's married life? Or <laughs> what's, how's your boyfriend? Are you still in that relationship? You're not going to tell me you got an email like that. You're going to lie. And if I had your password, you'd try to delete it so I couldn't see it. You'll purge all your messages, all your text messages from your telephone. You'll purge your call log so no phone numbers show up on it. Why would I want to put you into that position? I know there's certain people you're going to continue to talk to. All I'm concerned about is whether they got your panties off and they got inside. And if they did, I'm out. What is it with people who constantly want to spy on the others? This woman who wrote into this column is pathetic. If you discovered emails, cell phone calls, text messages, notes, 
Why are you still trying to work things out? It's time to go. Isn't it time to go? What are you trying to fix here? There's nothing left to fix. Is there? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I mean, once you know there's smoke, do you have to find the fire? Do you have to walk through the fire, get charred? I don't get it. Veronica, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Long-time listener, probably third-time caller. Thank you. Um, You know, I think that when a person knows, absolutely, they need to get out and don't try to placate or go to stupid counseling or things because you're not going to change somebody. People are who they are. But I think a lot of the times women and men drive people to cheat because they're controlling and insecure. And this is the case with this woman even suggesting that it would be okay for her to go through her husband's work email or go to his work. She's insecure and needy. And, you know, humans can only do what they need to do to get their needs met. And she should be out of there. She's obviously not doing it for him. So you're saying you have an idea of why he's cheating on her? Yeah, I kind of do, because she sounds like a really boring and annoying individual who keeps tabs on him all the time. Yeah, um, and, and even if uh, you are that kind of person, once you've got the evidence... Go. Why yeah. try? Just get out. Exactly. Have some self-respect. Right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you, Veronica. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Gabe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm okay. Um, yeah, actually, I was actually I'm one of the, I was one of those guys that you're talking about. That uh, I mean, I didn't go through like emails or anything like that. But uh, I mean, I, I I was dating this girl for about uh, three years. I know, big mistake um, right off the bat. But you know, I was high school, whatever. I was young, and um, you know, I actually helped her get a job where I was working at, and um, I found out later that she was actually hooking up with my boss. Well, there you go. Yeah, it was horrible. Um, it wasn't. Well, it was. I guess it was horrible for me. But the thing was, like, I I'd go like I'd get text messages and like even even people at work would hint to me, but like I just wouldn't believe it for the longest time. And I think what it is is um, there's a certain part of the female body that just piles our judgment. So um, the whole the whole time I just I couldn't believe it, and I actually went through one of her text messages, and and you know I saw for why'd myself. you do that. Um, you know, I was just, it was a bad mistake. I shouldn't have, but I'm actually glad I did because the minute I did, I just realized, like, there was no point in even trying anymore. I was just over the whole situation. So you got out at that time? Um, kind of. Well, I'm actually, this wasn't too long ago. This was a couple months back. I mean, she still talks, she still tries to call me here and there, and for the most part, I try to blow her off, but, you know, it's still, I don't know, it's rough. (laughs) But, I mean, I am, I am. Well, luckily for me, I got, like, friends, like, really good friends that'll actually, like, take me out and uh, encourage me to just get her off my mind, and I do, and I have. It was uh, just just, uh, just another vagina. What do you care? Go out and get another one. Exactly. That's 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 basically how I'm looking at it now. Who cares? So there are so many. You're absolutely right. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, By the way, you're 19. Yeah. What are you doing with a girlfriend, Gabe? You're right, man. I, you know, um, <laughs> I'm so the minute he did, I just based on a butt. I mean, I'll and just one eight hundred. We lost the caller. That's it. Hang up on him. Done. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. And we'll continue with your telephone calls here. Every once in a while, we got a little glitch, a little gremlin. This time, I think it was the guy's phone. I don't know what was going on there. No idea. Yeah, these things happen. Maybe his wife was spying on him. You ever see those spy shops? There's one on Sunset Boulevard. Right on the Sunset Strip, there is a a spy shop. And they have all these gadgets. In fact, I saw these when I was in France. There was actually several of them on the Champs-Elysees where you you go in and you buy yourself some of these uh, 
uh, you know, you can get uh, some of these things that can record off a landline. Does anybody have a landline anymore? I guess in France they do. And then they have uh, pep, you know, pepper spray and all that stuff. But they've got all these gadgets so you can record, you know, little cameras, little lipstick size cameras. So you can see what your wife or your girlfriend is doing. You know the deal. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Art on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Great. Glad to hear it. Uh, I met up with a buddy of mine from high school, and uh, he told me that when he was in Iraq, he came home. He was Iraq, in Iraq for about 10 months. He came back, and his old lady was six months pregnant. And uh, he walked into his bedroom and found the dude in the bed with her. Oh, and which did he know first, that she was pregnant or that the dude he, was in the bed? He walked in and saw her pregnant asleep on the couch. He, wait, he walked in and saw his wife pregnant? Yes, sir. Holy cow. Are you kidding yeah. me? I wish I was, but it, she did him a favor. You know, he got the hell out. Military wives, you can't do that. Jeez. So he got the hell out, and uh, yeah, he's he's a better man for it. I mean, he's doing great now. Well, that's why I tell you guys, you'd uh, all be better off just not getting married in the first place. But uh, oh, I hear you there. So many of the guys don't listen. You know, they don't pay attention. Well, I she's the I one, you. Tom. She's different from all the other skanks. She's different. They're all the We're same. in love, Tom, and you just don't understand because it never worked out for you. You're just bitter because it never happened for you. Yeah, you'll find out the hard way, buddy. Yes, sir. Take me out old school. Here you go, Art. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's talk to Andrew on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Doing okay, Andrew. I, I am that guy. Well, I'm not the one checking. My wife is always checking on me, man. Is always find. I don't know how she gets the passwords and stuff, the emails and all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, I think one of the reasons, and, and I'm not cheating on her. That's the thing. I'd never have, never would. You know. And I'll save that for a month or two down the road after we're divorced. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so you already know you're going to get divorced. Well, we've been married for six years. It's just been tough. And finally, it's just, you know, I'm tired of it. Just well, get why, out. why are you waiting? Uh, honestly, probably kids. It was, uh, financially the right thing to stay at the time. But now that I've got a little, well, you understand. Job, I mean, it boil, here's what it boils down to. Every two days you stay, you pay another day of vagina money. Yeah, I've heard you talk about that. I don't know why I haven't listened yet. And what are you waiting for? Uh, all the paperwork's going through right now. I'm not waiting. Oh, I'd say your attorney is doing the paperwork, or you, you have to hire an attorney? Uh, he's doing it. All right, so you're ready to go. Does your wife know it's coming? Uh, yeah, she realizes it, so, I mean, it's pretty much done with it. And what was right the now. reason? Because she's overly jealous? Uh, no, that, there's a lot more to it than that. She's bipolar. She's got everything. But I think every woman's crazy. They're just in denial. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's one of the reasons why I think she might be doing it, like checking up on me and other people, it might be the same thing. Maybe she's doing it and she wants to get the first end up, you know? Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, I know exactly what you're saying. Um, I'm the innocent one in here. Yep, I understand. Well, good luck on that. All right, can you take me out with a bong rip? I certainly can. <coughs> it's 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking about this so-called emotional affair. This guy wrote into the uh, the Dear Amy column. The so-called emotional affair where he, uh, uh, th th this guy, the husband of the letter writer, 18 years married, has been, uh, you know, sending emails, cell phone calls, text messages, and what have you, uh, to somebody else in the office. And uh, now the wife is wondering what's going on. And there's a certain amount of spying going on, baby. Say hello here to Jen on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Well, I just wanted to say that I agree with everything that you say. Good. It was my boyfriend who actually um, made me hook up to listening to you. There are like, some things that I don't agree with, but this time I totally agree with. 
It's, I mean, to me, in a relationship, you don't need to spy on anybody. You know, anybody will do whatever they want. Well, that's what I always say, and I've said it uh, before, and I'll say it again. If you need to spy on somebody, you, they're probably doing something they shouldn't be doing, or you're so insecure the relationship is wrong for you. Rather than humiliating yourself and demeaning yourself, <laughs> j just leave. Exactly. There's no point. You know, you value your time. You value yourself. You know, you trust yourself and the person you're, you're with. And there's no need for... Hey, hey, wait, what makes you think you can say the F word on the radio? Oh, I'm sorry. I just got you. I, every single call now. Every call. I just, I, I work with a whole bunch of guys and it's... Uh, that's not the point, dude. It's the radio. Um, Where I, did I, anyone ever get the idea they can call a radio station and use the F word? I don't understand it. I'm sorry. I got quite a set. My bad. It's just, it's just a you know, force of habit. Force of habit? Well, you know, I use the F word, too. Okay. But not when I'm on the radio. Yeah, but it's my first time on the radio, and like what I said, it's just like, you know, I have it every so day. So you just use the, the F word all the time. Yeah, I work with guys, and I'm the only girl in my department, so. So, and do you use it at home, too, when you talk to your mother? Do you use the F word? No, pretty much. I go home late. I go home and watch TV, so. When you talk to your mother? Um, my mom's actually working, so I'm pretty much. When you talk to her? No, I don't. When? You never talk to your mother? No. So you don't, uh, you and your mother don't get along? Uh, we're okay, but we hardly talk. You know, she works when I'm... How home. about your father? Do you use the F word when you talk to him? Uh, hopefully I would if, she still, if, if he was still alive. How about uh, your sisters, brothers, or any other people in your family? Like, don't be a brick. Other people in your family, do you use the F word when you talk to them? No, because I'm the only girl. I'm the only daughter, so... So what does that mean? Just what I said, I'm at work almost Be, 24. So you're the only daughter, so you do use the F word or you don't? Okay, Tom, I said, I'm sorry. I mean, it's the force of habit at work. I work with 24. But we're not, we're not, I don't work with you. Okay, um. Do you, do you, you, when you talk to your grandmother, do you use the F word? If there were no. Why not? Because. You're using it at work all day. Well, you know, it's, sometimes it's a force of habit. That was just it. it but we did, so like, do you ever nothing? say, I'm sorry, Grandma, I'm sorry, I said... Uh, I've done it before, and, and I apologized, that was it. And you did, you, so you, you, you told your grandmother the F word. You said the, 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 uh, you said the F word, you said the big F bomb to your grandmother. Uh, I was, I was telling her something, and you just, it just came out, All you right. know? I just wanted to see. That was just it. I just wanted to make sure that you're not, uh, you know, treating your family one way and me another. No, this is what I said. So I you just use the F word with everybody? Pretty much. I guess something of force of, force of habit. Attention advertisers, you too can reach this prime demographic. Wow. I mean, it was just drifting from one point to another. Well, maybe so. I didn't use the F word. You did. The F word became the focal point. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Shauna on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I've been listening to you on and off for years, and most of the men I date, I've come to realize they listen to you also. But um, anyways, the letter was wrong in so many ways, and you, you point out all of the features that were wrong with it. I mean, I used to be that person, but that was like when I was 19 years old. I'm now 35, and I can't believe she would write a letter and confess that she's doing that. And she's taking a risk of jeopardizing her family by getting her husband fired from his job because the girl's not going to get fired that he's communicating with because it's obvious that the woman's crazy. Right. And... um Another thing is probably he's not seeking counseling because he knows his wife is crazy. He's thinking it. He's trying to figure out a way how he can get away from her. He's probably talking to the lady, asking her what on a womanly, you know, asking for a female. Well, that, by the way, how that at the office, woman. by the way, regardless of whether he's cheating or, or not cheating, that's not a brilliant thing to do at the office. No, it isn't. It isn't. It's really uncalled for. And another thing, too, with her also, she's just obviously not mature enough to be in a marriage. She really isn't. She needs to take some time, get out of the marriage. Like you said, if you think someone's cheating, they obviously are That's cheating. right. Where there's smoke, there's fire, for God's sake. Tom, Tom, Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. Yes! From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. 
All right, so another devastated wife, and she signs herself right to the advice columnist, Dear Amy. She says, I've uncovered a fairly intense long-term emotional affair my husband of 18 years has been having with a co-worker. I discovered work emails, cell phone calls, text messages, and other personal communication. My husband and I have discussed this, and he assures me that he has discontinued the relationship. I have my doubts, and now she wants to contact the other broad in the office. Just just leave, okay? He has voted with his feet. Just leave. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Leo on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, long time uh, listener, first time caller. Thank you, Leo. Um, yeah, um, I'm pretty sure somebody's spying on my computer. I don't know who it is, friend or foe, but at work or at home? Home. Really? Really? Yeah, and and, and what, how do you know that? Well, sometimes um, I go into. Certain things, things are logged in where I haven't logged into. Um, so, are you married? Uh, I'm engaged. <laughs> uh huh. I don't have a prenup yet, but she's oh. autistic, and we're going to get one. All that, but she's what? Autistic. She's autistic. Highly functional, but yeah. A functional autistic who goes through your computer. No, no. Um, Sounds like a marriage I'm, made I'm in heaven. The one who uh, uses it. We bought it about a year ago. Then who's spying on you? It's probably my sister. We got the whole computer just to uh, for one purpose. What is that? To get on your show to give you my house. <laughs> yeah, what? I have a five hundred thousand dollar home that my sister got a false restraining order uh, to get me out of my own home, and I have a that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. So it's been wonderful having this conversation with you. Jesus, thank you, Dave. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Kevin on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Hello. How you doing? Hello. Hi. Hello. Boy, do I got a story for you, my friend. Yes. Uh, I'm an over the road truck driver. I was divorced in two thousand. Met a new girl in two thousand and two. Started dating her Christmas. She told me around my birthday, the end of January, I'm pregnant. I said, okay, cool. Well. She went on ahead and had the baby, and I told her, well, I think it's time you find out I had a vasectomy in 1997. <laughs> now, it's your choice. We can get a DNA test, and if it's mine, you can live here. I'll support the baby the whole nine yards. If it's not mine, there's a door. Don't let the doorknob hit you in the butt on the way out. <laughs> What's it going to be? How did she react to that? She said, well, I want a DNA test. I said, okay, fine. So we went, and I paid the $295, got the DNA test done. Guess what? 99.99999% you're not the father. Correct. So now, long story short, you know, oh, I don't have nowhere to go. My parents won't take me. Not my problem. There's the door. See you later. I had to get the sheriffs in Missouri, where I live at, to literally evict her from the house. And they told me, since she has mail coming to the house, she is a legal resident. Right. So long story short, we had to go to court. I got an eviction in my favor to get her out of there. <laughs> this day, I'm still having problems with her. Oh, I need money. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need that. Well, guess what, honey? You shouldn't have did what you did, because if you wouldn't have, you would have been on easy street right now. Did, you, really did, you, ever, did you ever find out uh, who did the deed? No, never did. And honestly, I don't want to know. No, I didn't know if, if, if you happen to hear about it or she told you. No, no, because if it's one of my friends, Tom, I will probably go ballistic. I really would. And, you know, it, some things are just better left alone. You know what I'm saying? I understand. So that's my story. So she's still calling you. She is still calling you. Yes. After you had her evicted. Yes. Wanting money, wanting help. Oh, can I stay the night? We don't have nowhere to go. It's not my problem. Right. It's not my problem. That's right. You know it? So let that be a lesson to all men. Maybe if you do get a vasectomy, don't say nothing about it and see what happens. <laughs> well, Tom, you take care of yourself, and every time I'm out here, I turn off the satellite and listen to you every time, my friend. I love it. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Take care of yourself, bud. Appreciate the call. Love those stories. Oh, I love it.
It's like having the Maury Povich show, like the home edition. <laughs> now that you've had the baby, it's time to tell you. I had a vasectomy in 1997. <laughs> Love it. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Sarah, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I totally agree with you on this subject. Females are so crazy these days. I, I know. And uh, even driving, gosh. Yeah. So I just wanted to give you my input, and every time I have a chance to listen to you, the radio's on. I love that. What do you do for a living, Sarah? I'm going to be working at Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin? What are you, are you, an, uh, are you an aerospace engineer? What do you do? Um, I work with computers. I see. So, I'm 23, so I'm, so I'm starting to get my life together. Oh, now you're starting to get your life together? Yeah. What were you doing before? Well... Well, I'm in a wheelchair, so I really didn't um, didn't know know what to do, and um, and my dad's helping me get the job and all that. It's pretty good getting a job at Lockheed Martin. Yeah, I'm so excited, Tom. Good for you. Congratulations, Sarah. Good luck to you. And. Thank you, and can you take me out with the o orgasm? I can take you out with an orgasm. Here you go. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> Tell you what. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Life is never boring in this chair. Never. Never. Let's say hello here to Daryl on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Daryl. What's up? How you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. And I was, uh, I just actually heard about your show today at work, man. A buddy was telling you about your, about your show. He's like, you might like him and you might not. But I, I'm hearing your topic, man. I can relate to that. I'm 27, man. I'm from the East Coast. I just came over here to work and stuff, man. And I left my wife and kids behind. Uh, and then when they were supposed to come out here in August, everything is supposed to be lovely and everything, you know. I come out here to work. I'm doing my thing, going to school, working and everything. And all of a sudden, you know, out of the blue, she wants a divorce. So, you know, what what, what do I do? I, I, I just got to give it to her, you know. That's just right. Her. And as uh, far as the uh, snooping around part and all of that, you know, uh, I was here with her dad, right? My father-in-law, I'm staying with him. And one weekend, I go out, and I, I got drunk, and I, you know, I'm not going to drink and drive, so I stayed on and, and slept on my partner's couch or whatever. And um, to the house, how about, I guess he goes ahead of me and calls her. So by the time I get on the phone and call her, it's like 10 o'clock Sunday morning. She's like, first thing out of her mouth, um, so how did you like it out, uh, staying out all night last night? So I'm looking at him like he's the only culprit to that. <laughs> you know, so he's like already stirring my pot up. So, you know, things we, uh, must go by, must go by. I move out of the house with him. That's when the thing started to change between me and my wife. Oh, Jesus. She was like the microscope for me. Oh. She was comfortable for me. She was comfortable me living with him. So she knows where I'm at at all times. When I'm here, she's there. I don't have a clue. I'm just having a trust, right? You know, so once I moved out, that's when she started, like, pushing me away, pushing me away. And if somebody like, oh. has to know where you are at all times, you know, if, when a man does that, they say uh, you're prone to domestic violence. They say you're controlling. You know, any time right? when know, a man yeah, says, I need, I need to know, when a man it? says, have you ever seen these shows about domestic violence? They say, when a man says, I need to know where you are at all times. That's a dangerous person. You should call the police. You should go to a women's shelter. But when a woman does it, it's perfectly okay. Yeah, it's normal. But like, it's to me, it's like you know, right, right about now, how I feel about it. I've been on my own pretty much for a year, going on a year, 
you know, I could do without her, you know. The only thing is we have three children, and, you know, we just going to have to work that out. But uh, for the most part, yeah, man, uh, people should just mind their own business. If if you can't trust nobody, just be by your damn self. Be by yourself. That's right. I, I'm living by myself, and it's the best thing that ever happened. Hey, hey, Tom, and uh, ever since uh, I've kind of got this, she actually spoke out of her mouth and told me to move on over the phone. You know, she said, Daryl, you need to just move on. You wow. know, only thing we have to talk about is uh, the kids from here on out. Yeah. So I'm thinking, and in my in my mind, you know, as a rational individual, I'm thinking, okay, if, if a person could tell somebody for 10 years they've been together with, you know, to move on that easy, it's obviously that they moved on too. They probably you moved know? on a long time before you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? It's just, you know, it's, it's like I'm a child. I hear it. I see it. I just don't want to believe it. But now, you know, like I say, over the course of three or four months, you know, I've gotten over the fact of, you know, I, I will always love her. But being in love with her is not there. She's killed it. She's totally killed it. So, you know, that's all I have to say on that t uh, topic right there, man. But uh, you're pretty funny guy, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. And uh, thanks for having me on. Thank you, Daryl. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Great. Yeah, well, I'm here at uh, CBS Radford. Since you can't say where you're at. <laughs> well, I, well, you can say where you're at, and if I were yeah. where you are, I could say I was at CBS Radford, which is that's the right. that's the studio in Studio City, uh, where uh, uh, Channel 2 and Channel 9 are here in L.A., but that's it's right. where they shot Seinfeld and a bunch of other shit uh -huh. comes over the years. Mary Tyler Moore I'm years ago and stuff. I have to shoot one at six here, but uh, listen, I was, telling, I was calling you because I was uh, dating a very seriously this married woman for about three and a half years. And, you know, she was somewhat controlling, but because, you know, she had her own house, I have my own place, you know, she couldn't do it that much. The only thing she can do is pretty much check my phone. Uh, one day, she did check my phone, and uh, one, uh, she saw a text message of a female friend of mine that had seen all the text messages I had saved from her, from my girlfriend. And, you know, it was, the name was Baby. So uh, my friend decided to play a joke, and she put Baby after her name. Uh, when my girl saw that, you know, she flipped out. I told her, look, I guess she was just spraying around. She saw your text messages. But anyways, she, in the shock, she said, I can't believe I dumped that other guy for you. Ah! <laughs> Not talking about her husband. Right. <laughs> you're the only, you know, and by the way, you're the only one I screw around with. Right, right. I mean, this is. I gave up uh, all the other guys I was screwing around with, and I only screw around with you because this is special. That's right, and you know, this is a beautiful girl. I, you know, I a couple times I went to her work, and uh, she works uh, in a mall, and uh, you know, there's a lot of guys always trying to pick up on her, but you know, I didn't care because she's not my wife. And uh, but when she said that, I was like, oh, <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, little did she know that. Yeah, you know. Every month I had a different flavor. Of course. You know, but it's like unbelievable because she wanted to tie me down. She wanted to control me. You know, she got me an answering machine in my house because I didn't have one. And she wanted to know that I was there. Oh, God. I hate that stuff. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at... BlowMeUpTom.com